county fair, as American as America itself. And nowhere has the county fair recorded itself more deeply into the consciousness and life of America than in Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. Here, year after year, are assembled the best horses that America produces. Here, the trotting horse is king, and the harness race the supreme event of the peaceful, prosperous year. Here, racing is not for the great stables alone. It's the sport in which every man may enter on an equal footing. The county squire, or his farmhand. Yes, here, the man with one horse which he himself has trained, which he himself may drive, is on an equal footing with every other entry. It's the sport of gentlemen racing. Racing not for money alone, for prizes, but for the sheer love of the horse, of the competition, the sport itself, for the betterment of the brood and the breed. How do you do, Holm? Well, come on in. Let me have a look at you. Are you a bad boy, Sparky? That's what they say, ma'am. Well, I reckon there ain't a place on earth with more room for a boy to be bad in than right here on Roundhouse Farm. It's got itself so overgrown with quiet that anything short of setting the place on fire comes as a relief. <laughs> Thunder! Huh? Don't make the boy stand there like that. Show him where to stow his dunnage. Come on, son. I'll show you where you're going to sleep. As soon as you unpack your bag, I'll show you your field shows. Well, what do you think of him? Can't tell yet till he quit sniffing. Decides whether he likes the smell. Thornton. 
Mr. Bolt brought me here. From Starhood, eh? Who are you? Tuppy. What you fooling around that uh, fence for? I, I was just looking over. That's the fanciest place I ever saw. Uh, so you talk with your mouth. Roundhouse make that place look like a bullfrog. Roundhouse? This place? Listen, for you was born and know so much, more records was busted by horses, stable here, and trained by Mr. Thunder, than these horseshoes next door. I didn't know Mr. Bolt was a trainer. Better hide your ignorance under a two-ton bucket. You said there weren't any horses left here. I didn't say that. The lady belonged to Mr. Thunder. She the only one we got left. She's blind. Blind is deep sleep. Poor old lady. Don't waste no breath calling her poor lady. The lady don't need no more eyes. Yes, sir. The world is full of horses with two good eyes that ain't never seen what the lady see. She see the finish line first. Gee, I, I'd like to watch her work sometime. When does Mr. Bolt work her out? He don't. But that isn't right. A trotting horse ought to have exercise. I give us a mile a day on a lead with my pony scraping the floor. Maybe on days when my giants is extra bad, I'd let you take her. If you're going to be around. Sure. Sure, I'll be around. Anybody don't like that's got no stomach. Get the boy. Sir. Yes, sir. Come on, this is your place. Thank you. Thunder. Did your Aunt Henrietta say grace? Yes, I'm. Thunder? Bless his food and us that eats it. Amen. Amen. Press butter. Well, Sparky, did you finish schooling? I don't take to school. There ain't much you do take to, is this, son? I take to horses. Oh, Lord. What do you know about horses? I had a Morgan mare. Gypsy. There wasn't a motor car could come down Yellow Mountain faster than she could. One day, one of them tried to get ahead of her, and she took to the ditch and bounced the old hickory wagon over the rock so hard that, that I, I had to tie myself to the seat with the, with the reins. That sounds like a Morgan, all right. And they sold her last week. Before I could shoot her. <laughs> you know, it was a Morgan mare that started harness racing. But the trouble with them Morgans was, you couldn't hold them. They never knew when to quit. Why, well, I recollect how two of them started out west from Pittsfield, sprang through Northampton and Worcester into Boston. You'd have thought that would have stopped them, wouldn't you? No, it didn't. 
They zigzagged through them cow paths, hit that bay, trotted clean under the Atlantic Ocean and come up on the other side to establish harness racing in Austria, Holland, Belgium and Russia, just like it is here today. No, sir. They don't breed them like that no more. Some of those mares next door look pretty good to me. You'll be going to school in the morning. Spark Thornton. Well, how'd you get in here? Came in through there. Through where? Stall there. Don't lie to me, boy. I guess you must be the boss man. Listen, I don't like fresh kids. Now beat it before I throw you out of here. Maybe you're boss enough. If I go back in there and come out again, you might be able to use me as a handyman. Hey, get away from there. You'll get hurt. Mo! Hey! Oh, there, boy. <laughs> Just look at that. Come on. Come here. All right, y'all can go back to work now. I told you I came through there. I came over that fence. Well, I'm sorry I called you a liar, boy. Son, how come you know so much about handling a man eating horse like him? Huh? Oh, uh, on account of my mother dying the day I was born. That's how I come to be weaned off a of Morgan mare. Well, I'd like to give you a job, kid, but I got all the handy men I can use. Are you Mr. Godal Bool? No, Mr. Bool is my father. This is Mr. Bruce, the trainer. There ought to be something, Jed, for a man that was weaned off a Morgan mare. Thank you. You must be very brave, or very foolish. <laughs> Which is it? I guess I'm just foolish. Can you drive, Sparky? Yes, sir. You sure? Sure. Well, let's see you jog this mare a couple of laps. Yes, sir. Sure. Come on. Come on. Daddy, who's that fellow? Uh, there's a new kid around here. Why doesn't he stop jerking on those reins? Do you want to get hurt? No, and I don't want the mare to either. You watch out. That was the rottenest piece of driving I've seen in all my days. He's a crazy horse. He's got a tough mouth. She's not crazy. She's got a mouth like a baby. I suppose you could hold her in. I sure could, blindfolded. Get out of there. Let me show you.
I'm sorry, Mr. Bruce. I didn't think it was any different from regular driving. That's all right, boy. No harm done. I hope I didn't hurt her. Oh, I'm sure you didn't. Hands, that's what does it. Some folks have them, some don't. I reckon probably I'm the biggest fool that ever drove a horse. Oh, no, you're not. You just can't start at the top, that's all. <laughs> no, it takes a lot of driving before you can talk to them in a whisper with your hands, the way Char does. Well, thanks for letting me try anyway. Bye. What's he leaving for? What did you expect him to do after the way you laid him out? Kiss you? Well, I guess it wasn't very nice. But he made me mad the way he saw it on Trumpet's mouth and then asked if I could hold her. Nevertheless, boys never like it if you show them up. You ought to remember that. You going back through the chief's stall? Uh -huh. I want to watch. Every time I get close to him, he wants to make a meal out of my arm. to do this. You want hands, don't you? Well, sure, but... Then keep walking. Keep walking till you can feel through the line what she's thinking. Then keep walking till you can answer right back. Well, Sparky, did you learn a lot today? Yes, I did. If you need any help, I'll go over your lessons with you after supper. No, ma'am. I've got to learn it myself. Well, that's right upstanding of you. I'll ask the blessing. Bless this food and us that eats it. Amen. Amen. Teacher needs your words. Here, Frank. I hope you don't mind my bar on the horse, Mr. Bruce, but I was afraid you wouldn't give me another chance. I hope you thought I was all right. Well, I don't know how you learned so quick, son, but you sure learned. Could you use me? Maybe. See me in the morning. I'll give you a try. Nice driving. That was a swell half all the way. Thanks. You aren't mad anymore, are you? I'm not mad at anybody. Then, then maybe you didn't mind being showed up. Mind? I ought to thank you. If it hadn't been for you, I'd never learned to drive right. That's what I told Cree Cree. Who's Cree Cree? You know her, Miss Boole. You were talking to her the other day. Oh, I know her name was Cree Cree. That's short for Christopher, just like mine's for Charlotte. I, uh, I don't see her around today. She's at boarding school. You've finished school, haven't you? Well, how could I work here if I hadn't? You couldn't. Well? Well? Well, 
I think I better go now. I'll see you tomorrow. Now will you go upstairs? Not down here in front of that innocent boy. Upstairs in the dark. And don't you dast come down again until the dust of prayer is ground into your repentant knees. Upstairs! Come on, help me get supper. Some more coffee? No. Do you want me to sit with you a while? Look here, Sparky, don't you get to thinking wrong things about Thunder. He's a good man. But once a year comes spring, he gets to hear the trotters trotting. When that happens, seems like he can't no ways hold back from drowning out the sound with liquor. Now that's all there is to it. Don't you worry none about me. I don't want to be butting in and asking questions I shouldn't, Aunt Penny. But what happened between him and Mr. Boole? Well, boy, some men folks quarrel over women. With Goda and Thunder, it was a horse, a mare. To a racing man, more precious than any beautiful woman. It all happened a long time ago. They was partners in business together, and they were friends, great friends. But Thunder was the honester of the two. There was an important race with a mare in it. Godaw set a heap of store on that mare as a win in that race. But something happened to one of her legs and she lost. And Godaw never even waited to get back to the stables to shoot her. And when Thunder saw that mare's glazed eyes looking up at him, he just went crazy. And he beat Godot right there. Lin Nymos killed him. That was the beginning. Godot set out to ruin Thunder. Took all his horses away from Roundhouse. Thunder tried hard to fight him back. All he needed was money enough to keep Roundhouse a-going, and he figured on winning that in the next big race. Everybody knew he had a better horse than Godot's. And the folks at that race just cheered like fury for thunder. And the crowd was just about lifting him and his horse right off the ground with their voices. But he lost the race. Seems like after that he lost everything. He couldn't even win a foot race against a fence post. But he kept his pluck. Until it seemed as if God was trying to convince him that he favored Godard Bull, and then his spirit snapped in two. Don't, don't have to tell you no more. You're seeing the rest for yourself. You mean after 18 years, he still feels like that? 18 years or 80, a racing man never changes how he feels. But... I'll bet if the stables were fixed up and there were foals again and, and horses, he, he wouldn't have those spells. Be that as it may, it ain't gonna happen. The barns ain't like they used to be. There ain't no foals, no horses. Leave the dishes, Sparky. I'll sit here a while. Yes, sir.
I said to leave him. Good night, Aunt Penny. Good night. I ain't going in there. I've got him cross-tied. Come on, this is important. Come on. You know this horse is big. Oh, he won't hurt you. Yes, he will. Come on now. What's all this mystery going on for? What have you been up to? I took the chief through here last night. The chief? What for? That's what I want to show you. I can't go on the other side of that fence. Nobody will see you. Hurry up. Chief over here, Mo. Man, oh man, what are you saying? If blood means anything, go to a bull beating thunder's dust inside of two years. Oh, Lord, let me out of here. No, wait, Mo. Oh, you gotta help me. Not me. Mr. Bull find this out, and I'll be the one needing help. Let me go. But you can't leave me, Mo. It's all done. What's done can't be undone. Besides, you know it now. Just you and me. It's our secret. Don't you see? You're in this as deep as me now. What do you say, Mo? I say I'm sorry I was ever born. Mr. Boone find this out. He won't, though. Not unless you tell him. I ain't gonna tell him. 
What are you saying, Mo? Come here. Look at her, Mo. Look at the lady. Isn't she a beauty? She got a record? Tuffy says so. Then it's so. Your face is young, Sparky, but the sign of Great Richard is written all over it. I need your help, though, Mo. That's why I had to tell you. I've got to get papers for the foe. Oh, I can do that. Maybe. But not without you got a hundred dollars. They cut the chief's fee to only a hundred dollars on account of him being so honorary mean. Well, it'd take me a long time to save that much money. What about Mr. Thunder? Oh, I can't tell him. Well, not until I get the papers. I got eight on me. Maybe I could collect. I got six on me for exercising horses. That's 14. Hey, what's the matter with you? Daddy, when is it right not to tell? You mean in the racing game? Why, you know the rules as well as I do. You never tell except for cash, profit, or a laugh. Oh, you're the most wonderful daddy in the world. Have you got $20? Hey, what is this? What do you want $20 for? You said I didn't have to tell. All right. doing? Helping nature a little. When did you start doing that? When nature started needing a little help. Julie Evans told me at Nashville last year that all the girls there do it. Doesn't it hurt? Not much. Here, let me do it for you. Oh, no. Daddy'd razz me to death. Well, you wouldn't notice just a couple. What's the sense of doing it, then? Look, Cree Cree, I need sixty dollars. Sixty dollars? For what? Why, I can't tell you. You can't tell me. Why, Char, I thought we didn't have any secrets from each other. Oh, it isn't a personal secret, or I'd tell you. This is a, well, a business secret. How could you have a business secret? Oh, I just have. Please, Cree Cree, don't ask me. Well, where would I get $60? Well, get it from your dad. Tell him you want new boots or something. Well, all right, I'll try. But I still think you could tell me. Well, you get it now. If you get it right away, I'll tell you something else. What? Gordon's home. He came over to see you this afternoon. He is? Well, why didn't you tell me? The other's more important. At least I thought it was. Well, I'll be very happy to see Gordon. That's what I told him. If you told him any such thing, I'll pluck out every eyebrow on oh, your I head. Oh, I didn't, Cree Cree, honest. If you did. Oh, I didn't. Now hurry up, Cree Cree, get it. Take this eight dollars to the meeting tonight and talk soft and nice to Mammy Luck. I got it. There. Eighty-six dollars. With your fourteen, that makes the fee. Where'd you hear about it? I followed you and Mo. It's all right, though. I don't have to tell on you. I asked my dad and he said I didn't. You told your dad? Of course not. I just asked him when a person had to tell what they knew about other people. That's right. Just for cash, profit, or land, she's in the clutter. You can get the certificate, can't you? Don't you worry about that. Just let Mo Rum take care of that part of it. Sparky bred the horse, Char takes care of the fee, and I'll arrange about making it legal. Ooh, look at that. Don't worry, now. Who's that with Cree Cree? Gordon. He lives in that big white house up the road. He just got back from school. Is school over? Sure, it was over yesterday. Why? Well, then I got no more excuse for being over here all day. I thought you said you were through school. Well, I didn't come right out and say it. Besides, now I'll probably have to help Thunder with the farm and... Couldn't I come over and see you? Well, I guess so. Yeah, you could come swimming in the pond. Maybe Penny would think you and Creaky were friends I made at school. You think Creaky would come? Sure. Creaky. 
Who's that? The boy from next door. Roundhouse? Mm-hmm. Do you see much of him? Some. Sparks asked us over to his place to go swimming. Oh, this is Gordon Bradley. Spark Thornton. Hello, Thornton. Hello. Well, you've been keeping secrets from me, Sparky. I didn't know you had a place to swim. It's just a pond. Am I in on this invitation? Sure. We'll get our suits and meet you. I'll be outside the house. Hey, what's the idea of that hello, Thornton? We call all the fellas by their last name in Lawrenceville. Oh. Come on, Bull. Okay, Bruce. Oh, it's like something out of a fairyland. Oh, come on. Well, here goes nothing. The last one back and across is an old maid. It's easy. Here, let me show you. <laughs> Stroke out with your hand like that. Stroke out with this one. Wonderful. <laughs> I don't mind it myself. Hey! Look out, Ball! Here I come! He's probably holding his breath. Oh, do something, Gordon. He must be hurt. Don't get excited. Oh, hurry, hurry up, on, Gordon. What about that certificate, Ma? When are you going to get it signed? You keep your mouth off me about that. I'll tend to it when the time's right. Oh, you've been saying that for months. I'm nearly busting to get it off my chest before Thunder finds out himself. Hold your breath, boy. Time's now. That's Mr. Bull. Where? Oh. Oh, you've been keeping the chief busy, huh? Yes, sir. Since we cut his feet, seemed like even no constable in the state wants him. Nothing good, huh? No, sir. Not even a man you let pull your hay wagon, sir. You have a chief. chief. Look! I got all cash. I wouldn't trust them flying by night, Steve, with no foot, and I could see the color of their money. Look at that. <laughs> That's right, Mo. It's a good idea. Now, you tell uh, Mr. Bruce he can mail these out. Yes, sir. <laughs> I've done it. Here it is. Now, you hide that away from rust and moth and fevers in folks' eyes. Don't look like much or nothing now, but some of these moths is going to turn into a thousand dollar bill. Maybe more. Thanks, Mo. And you too, Char. Gee, is Thunder going to be surprised? Oh. Thunder! 
Commander, listen to me. Don't you dast hit that boy. Don't you dast hit him, I said. Don't hit him. Don't hit him. I'm going to lick you, boy. The lady ain't yours to spoil. You go fool around with lady, you maiden of the sun. Down the hill, 20 out. Tell you. I'm sorry, sir. I wanted to tell you. That night when I heard you walking up and down. Well, anyway, here's a certificate. Oh, no, sir. He doesn't know a thing about it. I, I was watching Mo when he gave him Mo? Some... Who's Mo? Oh, he's the groom to Hamilcar Chief. Oh. Says here the stud fee was $100. Where'd you and Mo get that? Well, Char loaned us most of it. Who? Char. Char Bruce. That's Mr. Bruce's daughter. Appears to me there's a lot of folks in on this for a secret fool. Oh, well, Char's all right. And so's Mo. Right, if you say so. Let's see now. This means we have us a, an April Fool rated as a yearling at, at eight months old. That's soon enough. Soon enough for all we got to do between now and then. Um, before we close this meeting, son, I want to beg you not to regret the licking I give you. It's a long road you and me is going to travel, Sparky. But let me tell you this, son. It never made a real man any less of a man to take an unjust belt or two along the way. Sure, it didn't hurt. Now leave me to work this out. I got a lot of long range figuring to do. Hey, Sparky. Huh? Come here. What are you and Thunder so thick as thieves about all of a sudden? Oh, it's a secret. A secret, huh? Mm-hmm. The meals around here is liable to fall off considerable if I'm unhappy. Oh, I guess no secret's worth that. The lady's gonna have a cold. What? Oh, Sparky. No wonder he wailed you. Whatever made him quit? Well, finding out the sire was Hamilcar Chief, one of Godard Bull's studs. Now everything's all right. No, it ain't. Little do you reckon what's happened to you, Sparky. Something that'll never leave hold of you. It's a shame, but there ain't nothing to be done about it now. Once bit, you stay bit. Bit by what? The horse bug. You watch. Whenever you see a bum so bright he could have been rich if he tried, say horse to him. Watch him scratch. However, so be it. Mr. Thunder! Mr. Thunder, wake up! 
If you to wait out here till the time's ready. Well, I'm going on over there now. Are you sure he doesn't need any help? Who, Mr. Thunder? No. Well, you'll be sure and call us when it's over. I'll call you before it's two seconds old. Now you just go on over there and sit down now. Well, all right. I wish they'd hurry. Sometimes it takes an awful long time. Don't you think we'd better sit down? Well, how can I sit down now when the lady's having a foal? Well, she can have it just as easy that way. I'm sorry, Char. I, I guess I'm just a little jumpy. You know... You know, it's wonderful to have someone, someone to stick by at a time like this. Who? Me? Well, sure. You've been wonderful. Oh, gee, Sparky. I didn't do anything. Well, you got the money. That wasn't just anything. Oh, I just happened to be around. Well, that's what counts. See the future one of the hammer told you? Oh. Which is it? It's as sweet a filly as I ever saw. Well, if he got drunk and passed out somewhere, I'll... Merry Christmas, Sparky. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Aunt Penny. Merry Christmas, Thunder. Merry Christmas. Oh, here's a present for you. A present? What did I do? Where? And here's one for you, Thunder. For me? Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you, Sparky. Sparky Thornton, if that ain't the nicest present I ever got. Come over here. Sparky, that's a mighty nice present, and I appreciate it. It's just what I needed. Oh, fits perfect like it was made for me. Well, I, I, I've got a present here for Tuppy, too. I, I guess I'd better take it on down to him. Well, uh, wait and have your breakfast first. It's already on the stove. Yeah, you better get some vittles in you. Well, I guess it looks like Christmas kind of sneaked up on us without giving us a chance to get you something. Oh, that's all right. I didn't yeah. expect a present anyway. <laughs> You'd be the first boy I ever see that didn't. Here it comes! What? Why don't you take a look and see? There's your Christmas present from me and your aunt. Mine? Yep. Fit it to you like the skin to an apple. You like it? Oh, gee. Can I try it? Sure you can, son. Just remember, she ain't never felt the weight of a body behind her before. 
Just talk to her, slow and gentle, with your hands. Sparky! Huh? Oh, thanks. Merry Christmas, Sparky! Oh, Merry Christmas, Tuffy. Tuffy? Hello, baby. How are you? How are you, baby? This is the nicest present I ever had. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Tuffy. All right, Tuffy, let her go. It's all right, Maudine. It's just me. It's just me, Maudine. All right, Maudine. Take it easy, baby. Take it easy. I'll be right down. Well, shake it up. I'm dying to find out what this baby will do. All right, all right. Just a minute. Hello, Cree Cree. Hello. Where are you going? We're riding Gordon's new car. Oh. Oh, don't go now. Why not? Sparky's coming over. Oh, my goodness. Did you get him anything for Christmas? No, I forgot all about it. Oh. Well, Char, I was so rushed. Is he giving me anything? Uh-huh. Are you sure? He told me so. Gee, what'll I do? I'll have to give him something. I know what. I'll give him the tie I was going to give Dad. Oh, that's swell. He'll like that. Come in. Mr. Spark Thornton's downstairs. He's here, come on. There he is. Hello, Sparky. Hello. How'd you get your colic to stay down? Saddle soap. Hello, Cree Cree. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Sparky. Well, I wouldn't have known you all dressed up. Here. For me? Uh-huh. Why, Sparky. Did you wrap this all by yourself? No, Aunt Penny did it. Perfume. Kiss at midnight. Why, Spark Thornton. Well, it's in French. I didn't know what it meant, really. I bet you did. No, I... Mmm. Here, smell. Smells kind of sweet. The fella said it was good. Oh, it is. Here, smell, Char. Mmm. Oh, here's yours. Oh, gee, thanks, Sparky. What is it, Char? Let's see. Oh, it's just beautiful, Sparky. It's a keychain. I figured even if you didn't have any keys, it was a handy thing to have. Oh, it is. I'll certainly wear it. Oh, well, of course it won't fit on your dress, but it will fasten on your blue jeans. Now it's my turn. Just a little remembrance. Oh, gee. Oh, guys. Say, this is real good looking. Do you really like it? Oh, sure. Hey, Cree Cree, come on. Let's hold you up. Welcome to the club. She must buy them wholesale. I don't think that was very nice, Gordon. Tears your heart out, doesn't she? I think it was pretty nice of her. Well, I guess I better be getting back. I'll see you later. Merry Christmas, and thanks. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Sparky. I think that was very sweet. But Gordon didn't mean anything. He was just trying to be funny. I, I guess I'm not much good at making jokes. No, you're not. But don't let that worry you. Sometimes I don't think he's so funny either. Well, goodbye. Goodbye.
Aren't you going to use this? Oh, heavens, no. That smells like incense. I read once somewhere that a man shouldn't even try to pick out perfume for a woman, unless he's been around the world once and married twice. I don't think I could like a man that had been married twice. Oh, you take everything as seriously as Sparky. He's not as serious as all that. You know, when I first saw Sparky, I thought he'd changed. But as soon as he opened his mouth, I knew he was the same old Spark. <laughs> it's funny to come back after seeing prep school and college men and find somebody who gets all tied up in knots when he even talks to a girl. Sparky doesn't get tied up in knots with me. We talk all the time. Oh, that's different. You see him every day. Besides, what do you talk about? Who? Horses, usually. That's what I mean. Oh! oh. Mmm. Oh, you. First thing you got to learn is pace. I'll take the lady at a 220 clip for one lap. You fall her. When I pull up, you take the filly for another full half. Can I let her out a little to see what she can do? You go one second faster than 220, and you and me's going to tangle again. She ain't ready to be asked what she can do. And you ain't ready to ask her. Now, come on. driving, wasn't it, Thunder? Not bad. I've seen worse than many a circuit track. What do you think, Tuppy? Can he get out of a wheel lock all right? It's a long ways yet till he belongs up with the men. But he's ready to make it stop. Thanks, Tuppy. Can I let her out now? Next time, if she clocks what she ought to, we're about ready to pick us off a stake. A stake race? <gasps> you mean you're going to let her start right off in a stake race? You don't think we'd start Maudine in a glamour, do you? Go on now. We got thinking to do. Did you hear that, Char? A steak race. You're going to take cold standing around like that. I brought my suit. Let's go for a swim. All right. Come on. Wonderful. You know, you know, if you've been a boy, we'd have been the greatest pals. What's wrong with me the way I am? Well, nothing. But you know how guys are. Tell 
my There's Cree Cree. No. Oh, Cree Cree. Hi, Sparky. Hi, Char. When did you get back from school? Oh, yesterday. Didn't Char tell you? Oh, I forgot. Well, I'd have come over to see you. Oh, well, as long as you didn't come to see me, we came over to see you. Well, I'm glad you did. You too, Gordon. Thanks. How's the water? I've been dying for a swim ever since I got back. Oh, it, it's swell. Sparky. You've gained weight, too, haven't you? Some, yeah. Remember the first time we went swimming? Uh-huh. Every time you dived, I was afraid your trunks would come off. <laughs> <laughs> so was I. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Char! Hey, excuse me, Mr. Char! Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Char. Hey, wait a minute. I'll walk home with you. You don't have to. Are you mad about something? Why should I be? Well, all right, then. I'll see you tomorrow. I think I'll go see who's around. Go ahead. Aren't you going to help us handicap him, honey? I've got my list all made out. We're going to look at the board. Glad to see you. Betting on what, in four? You kept one secret pretty good. I'm asking you to keep this one. If Sparky knew I'd bet all I could dig up on Maudine's nose, I might upset him some. I won't tell. Good. Can I come see her? I'd be pleased if you would. You ain't been around in quite a spell. She's in good shape. She's fitter than a ten dollar fiddle. Like cedar. You smell as clean as the inside of a red cedar chest. Hello, Char. Oh, hello. Where have you been keeping yourself? You didn't even come over to see us off. Oh, around. What's the matter? Well, if you don't know. Look, Char. Well, you were sore about my not walking home with you from swimming, weren't you? I said I was sorry. You needn't be. People being sorry just makes other people mad. It isn't your fault you don't like me. Don't like you? I do so, Char. Why, why you and, and Maudine Four, I guess, are the best friends I've got. Hey, Sparky. Come in here. Come on, Char. Sit down. You drawed number eight in the second tier, but with that bunch you're up against, I ain't so sure but what is better. Are they so good? Well, they ain't the best drivers in the world, but they don't come no trickier. That's why I picked Mentonville. It ain't the horses you're up against. It's the syndicate. What's a syndicate? Sockwell Fonda and Hunger Ford. And that flea flip driving for your dad. Yeah, I know. What are you trying to do, scare me? Listen, Sparky, I ain't saying it ain't fine to be brave, but a little fear is a healthy thing to have. Remember that. You better beat it now, child. We got a harness. And when Godard Boo gets a look at Maudine's mark, and you better not be too close around us. I wouldn't miss seeing his face when he finds out for the world. <laughs> Come on.
Well, I... I hope this brings you luck. Oh, thanks. Well, goodbye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to witness the third event on the program. The $600 purse for two-year-old trotters. Two out of three heats. The parade is led by outrider Miss Donna Byers. In number one post position is Stella Hanover, owned by Mr. Godaw Boole, Flea Flip Dryer Up. Number two, Espinosa, owned by Mr. Dan Daly, driver Ed Dunwoody. Number three, Dixie Spencer, owned by Faye Phillips. Driver, Clint Hodgins. Number four, Don Frisco. Owner, Fred Shaw. Oak Lowen up. Number six, Bob Butter. Owned and driven by J. Weller. Number eight, Maureen Ford. Owned by J.F. Bolt. Driver, Spark Thornton. Look, it's Sparky. New Philly. That's Marking. She looks like... Let me see that. Turn slowly together. Don't be in a hurry. Hold your positions. Don't get ahead of the pole horse. Number one, flea bled dryer has the pole and nobody is to come down ahead of him. Mr. Dunwoody, hold that horse back there. Jay, take it easy, take it easy. And if you don't hold that horse back, I'll put you on the outside. Easy, easy now, Mr. Weller, hold back. Go! Come on! Yet. Not yet. No! Come on, Marty! Come on! Come on, Marty! Let's take him, baby! Come on, Marty! Stole that heat squirt, but you'll want any more. Hello, Sparky. Oh, hello. Gee, you were wonderful. That was really swell driving. Thanks. Do you want a drink? No, thank you. You aren't sore, are you? About the fall? Uh -huh. Oh, that was Godard's loss, not mine. I don't see how he managed to keep it so secret, though. Well, it was kind of tough. Was Char in on the secret? Well, yeah. But she found out about it. We had to let her in. You could have told me. You might have known I wouldn't give it away. Well, we didn't tell anybody. Char just happened to find out. Where's Gordon? Why do you always ask that? Well, he's usually with you. Nice driving, kid. I'm going to bet on you the next time. Oh, there's your change. Thanks. He's all right. How does it feel to be a celebrity? Ten minutes ago, you were just an unknown name on the program. And now everyone's telling you what a wonderful driver you are. I think so too, Spark. Well, you, you don't have to be a good driver. Not with Thunder telling you what to do and Maudine Ford to do it. <laughs> oh, I've got to go now. No, no, wait a minute. Here, you wear this. Whoa, I'm afraid I'll get it all dirty. Now, when a lady asks a gentleman to wear her favor, it isn't romantic to be so practical. Just to prove my faith, I'm going to bet $10 on you. Goodbye. Bye. Here he comes. Hello. Hi. Gee, Spark, 
Jackie, that was wonderful. Thanks. You made your move just right. She sure jumped out, didn't she? Yeah. Didn't hardly have to drive that time, did you, Sparkle? No, it was cake. We're gonna take the next heat, too, Thunder. Maybe. Maybe not. No two heats alike. You'll be on the pole this heat, and they'll be watching you, especially Flea Flip. He wouldn't like being forked by a new kid. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks, Tuffy. Maybe he should have had a mite more dirt his first time out. Them. That's what they're doing. Why don't you pull up? You're out of it. You'll sink, you squirt. Daddy. Get over or I'll ram you. Look out. Stay there, Sparky. Stay there. Gonna have to get rid of her. No, no. What give you such a thought? It's only a quarter crack. Quarter crack? It was my fault, Sparky. Them high wheel suckies I learned on couldn't be made to lean. But I ought to know and warned you. No. I wrecked her just showing off. Come on, son, let's load her. No, you load her, Thunder. There's something I've got to do. Can't you let that wait till another day? No. Are you gonna let him do it? A man's got a right to settle his troubles in his own way. All I can do is see the odds is right. Mo. Yes? Sparky's in the mood to get himself in trouble. Follow him. Where's he going? Don't give us no back talk. Watch over him good. Or you'll get what for and then what? Yes, I'll watch him. Dad said I could ride home with you, if it's all right with you. You sure can, honey. Have you seen Flea Flit Dryer? No, sir, I ain't seen Flea Flit since the races. Maybe he's left already.
All right, Thunder. Hold it, Tuppy. Oh, honey. Tuppy's here, and nobody's going to hurt you. If he's hurting you, honey, you won't bite something. Go ahead and bite. The frog is the cushion for the foot. When that goes out of business, why, well, the only thing you can do is rig a substitute. If she puts her weight on it, she's cured. Sparky, she's cured. You better catch her, Sparky, before she splits it again. Have you seen my daughter? Uh, no, sir. Char? Yes, sir. Uh, Char, go find Creepery, will you? Tell her we've got to go. All right. I was wondering if you were coming to say goodbye. Sure. Well, goodbye. I won't see you again until Christmas, Sparky. Well, you'll be coming to the Chester Clay Trots. Yes, but so will 50,000 others. Sparky? Yeah? You'd like to kiss me goodbye, wouldn't you? Why don't you? Not here. don't you? I, I told you I wasn't much good at making jokes. I wasn't joking. You don't know how different you are, do you, Sparky? Every time I see you, you're older and changed. You're not like any boy I've ever known. I wanted you to kiss me. Now, that was goodbye until Christmas. Cup of coffee. Yes, sir. They called her Hotworthy. 
And you'd have thought she could have hauled a jump, but you never seen so many open mouths in your life when she come trotting in two lengths ahead. <laughs> Mentioning heartworthy thunder, I'm auctioning off a horse with that strain, Monday. Why don't you come over? Here's a well, catalog. I ain't buying nothing, Roger, but I, I would like to see him. What time? In the morning. You gonna open Roundhouse again? Wait a minute, I didn't say that. I'm just looking. <laughs> That's the best news I've heard in 18 years. <laughs> While you're looking, take a look at my strength. Now, don't rush me, boys. Remember, I got a race to win tomorrow. Well, if the old luck comes back, you will, and we sure hope you do. We need you. Thank you, Roger. Well, Jim, just in case, if I do open up again, I'd naturally want the best. What you got over to your place? What well, are you I'm talking uh, about? I don't care who was driving. Amble Boy never be two minutes flat in his life. Ain't that right, Thunder? What? Amble Boy never be two minutes flat in his life, did he? That's right. I remember the race that the argument was about. It was the year of that heavy April rain. The mud was thicker than turkey stuff. Thunder. Yeah? I think I'll turn in. All right, son. You go ahead. I'll be right up as soon as we straighten this out. All right. I don't have to learn it. And since when do you go around grinning at all the fellas like a toy doll for? They're all staring at you. That's what boys are supposed to do. They don't stare at me, they'll stare at someone else. What kind of talk is that? Look, you tend to your horses. No one has to tell me how to act. Look, Char, I don't know what's got into you, but I don't like it. Well, I do. Do you want me to take care of this fellow for you? You don't have to. She hit me hard enough. Mr. Thunder? Yeah? What is it, Cuppy? Good morning, darling. 
just like the lady. How long has she got? I don't know. I'll have to get a vet to find that out. Ain't bothered a sight yet. Tubby, don't say nothing to Sparky about this. Ain't necessary for him to know until he has to. You know, sense for nobody to know it till it happens. Don't you worry, none. You're going to see plenty of it. Good luck, Daddy. Thanks, honey. I'll need it. That other fellow's a great little driver. It's all right with me if you root for him, too, just a little bit. Oh, Daddy. to you too, honey. I'm sorry, Char. Uh, That's all right, Sparky. I understand how it was. No, you don't, Char. I was just a big fool, that's all. But when I saw you last night, like... like that... well, I was just a big fool. Char, what's the matter with me? Don't you know? I only know I want us to be friends again. Will I see you after the races? If you want to. We're friends again? Sure. Even pals. <sighs> Guys, Char. Well, I, I guess I have to go now. Good luck, Spock. Thank you, Char. Bye. And Char, I, I don't want to be just pals anymore. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready for the first heat, the first event, the $10,000 stake for two-year-old charters. Number one on your card, Maud Dean Four, owned by J.F. Bolt, Spark Thornton driver. Number two, Margaret McElwain, owned by Mr. Swiss Helm, Byron Perry. Up. Number three, Stella Hanover, owned by Goudal Boole, Judd Bruce. Up. Number four, Don Frisco, owned by Jack Shaw, Oat Lowen up. Number five, Lance Butter, owned by Goodall Boole, Fleet Flip Dryer up. Number six, Bob Butter, owned and driven by Jay Weller. Everybody be careful now. Everybody in your position, come slow with them. Don't be in a hurry now. Don't be in a hurry. Don't beat him here. Don't beat him here. Take a hold of him on the outside here. Not too fast. Not too fast. Here. Keep him there, Jed. Keep him there. Hold her, I'll ram you! Go right ahead! Break your other leg! Better pump up the tires. Hurry up, Tuppy.
You should have drove yourself instead of sending a boy to do a man's job. Tuppy. Well up, go well up with your horses now so that you won't uh, anybody be on the break and don't be in a hurry. So everybody be on the trot this time. All right, now be careful how you turn them. Nobody be sell a hand over here. Let Jed Bruce ride around in that position. We're well, all on the trot. We will sell a hand over on the trot here now. Easy, easy. Let this man get on the trot here. Let him get on the trot. Live or die, I love you. Thanks, Lord. I wasn't sure you could hear me. What kind of a driver do you think you are? Now, you listen to me, Jed. You let that wet-eared pup of a kid make a monkey out of you again, and you're out of a job. I'll drive to win, you know that. But win or lose, you and your job can go to the devil. Get that goat off. Win or lose. Now, we'll talk that over in the morning. You go ahead and win the race first. I'll win if I can, but what I said still goes. This is your last chance, you understand? I understand. This ain't only the last heat, but it's your last chance to save him. That's what I mean. It's the almighty's wonder. You brought him nearly all the way back, boy. Mr. Thunder's acting like himself again. For the first time in 18 years, he ain't looking back. He's looking straight through tomorrow. He sees good things ahead. There ain't no empty stables. Why is he looking? Sure, Tuppy. I understand. We won so far, but you understand what'll happen if you lose now? Mr. Thunder's hopes will shrivel up just like a dead weed and roundhouse, and everybody in it will be licked again. I don't want that to happen, Tuppy. Then you know what to do. I'll be praying with you until you cross that finish line first. I'll do my best, Tuppy. Thanks a lot. this major event, $10,000 for charity for two-year-old trotters. We have two heat winners, Maud Dean Four and Stella Hanover, to race the third and deciding heat. Oh. Don't you feel gloomy, Mo. Dad will get another stable and he'll be the first man he'll take on. I ain't gloomy. I'll scared. Happens Maud Dean Four win this heat. I'll be the richest wife, light of darkest world of men ever seen. All right. Now take your billies up there well and turn slow. Now let's have them on the trot. Don't try to come away too fast. Mark, don't try to get away too fast up, matter. This other make you on his stride. You was on a break, hit the wire. Easy with him now. Take hold of him. Don't come too fast with him, Be please. no tricks this time, Sparky. You drive the best you know, and I'll do the same. We'll let the best horse win. 
Maudine. What's happened, Tubby? Her eyes. Wait out here, Jed. Wait, Jed. Wait, Jed. Wait now. Not too fast. Not too fast. Hold her. Take on it. Hold her. Go! Oh, be Mr. Thunder. She don't know why she's going. Just trust him to his head. He's got him. He's doing it. It was my fault. No, it wasn't. It was the hand of the Lord that touched her. It's been coming on her since she was four. Be thankful she got to do what she was bred to do. And take heart and lift your head before you shame her. She's blind, Char. Oh, Sparky. No, you don't, Char. Didn't you hear what Thunder said? She needn't be unhappy or suffer or go hungry ever. No. Never hungry and never unhappy. There'll be another Maudine, Char. Someday. And she'll be trotting around the cornfield track with Maudine Four alongside, steadying her and teaching her like she was taught with a lady. Only then, well, 
Then the track will be plowed, and there'll be a fence around it. And the barns will be painted green and white. And there'll be yearlings in all the stalls again, Char, like there were before. And, and your dad, well, he'll be the head trainer for Thunder. And Mo, well, Mo will do all the work so Tuppy can just take care of Maudine Four and the lady. We're gonna have the best darn farm in the country, aren't we, Char? If you say so, Sparky. Thank you.